Hey guys, Constance here at A Good Life Farm. So I was tagged in a homesteader's YouTube tag and I thought I would go ahead and film that today. Uh, today is Sunday, December 15th and it's a little bit of a momentous day for me personally because the new website that I have been building launched this morning. If you are new to my channel, I am a lifestyle and food blogger. I've been a blogger for many years at cosmopolitancornbread.com and today I launched a brand new website in addition to the original one. This one is all healthy recipes from the farmhouse to the family table and all of the recipes there have a real food, healthy food um, sort of influence and the name of that new blog is Wholesome Skillet dot com and I just wanted to throw that out there because I know many of my subscribers have been waiting for this new blog to launch and I'm so excited to say that it has and it has its own Instagram account its own Pinterest and all of that so it is a completely separate entity from my original blog Cosmopolitan Cornbread alrighty so without further ado let me take a quick sip of my coffee and then I'll get started with the tag. So I was tagged by the channel Providence Farmstead and this is a tag of 10 questions designed for homesteaders and some of these are topics that I've actually talked about in the past um, so this will be a little bit of a recap and revisiting of those topics. Now, as I get started here, of course, as always happens, I've got a dog in the other room eating. So if you can hear some crunching, just disregard. We have four dogs here in this house, and um, they don't always understand the etiquette of YouTubing. <laughs> Question number one, what got you started in homesteading? So here's the thing. I did not grow up in the country. I did not grow up on a farm. Um, my grandparents didn't have a farm, however, most of my great-grandparents were farmers. My mom's mother, my maternal grandmother, did live out in the country and she had a garden. She was extremely frugal, so much so that we would laugh about it when we were kids. However, now I aspire to be as pennywise as she was. She always had a big garden, she canned, and that is one of the influences I think that led me to want to live this life. But there's a few other things as well. For instance, in one way I could blame my mother for me wanting to live the homesteading country lifestyle because every summer we would go to the fair usually the county fair but sometimes we would go to the state fair as well and the highlight of going to the fairs was walking through the animal barns and seeing all of the goats and the chickens and the rabbits and the cows and i remember as a kid I would see those farm kids who were there and they were taking care of their animals and all of that and I remember thinking those were the luckiest kids in the whole world because they got to live on a farm. So even back then farming was this little seed that was growing inside me wanting to have a small farm, have a homestead. And another thing that kind of led into that was when I was in third and fourth grade, my two teachers that I had for those grades kind of teamed together and they started us off with the Little House books. We read several of them as a class. We read, of course, Little House in the Big Woods and Little House on the Prairie and a couple other of the books throughout those years. And I remember listening to the stories and I felt this kinship to Pa because Pa wanted to live out in the in the wilderness and, and not be by people and and farm and and give it a go and all of that whereas ma 
didn't necessarily have that mindset, but Pa did. And I just, and I don't know if it was the last name thing because my maternal grandparents were Ingalls and I don't know if there is a relation or not. It's hard to say. Um, I don't have a lot of information on that branch of my tree. But in any case, the fact of the matter is hearing those stories, going to the, to the fairs as a kid, I think those are what really got me thinking about this this lifestyle and I always knew that someday I was gonna live in the country and I was gonna have animals and I was gonna have a little farm and it was only going to be a matter of time and thankfully the band that I married has the same mindset at heart and while he works in the city and he commutes every day um, and so a lot of the stuff that I do here I do on my own uh, he loves it and he loves to be able to enjoy it. Question number two, what do you want to add to your homestead in 2020? Um, there are several things that I want to add. I don't know when I will get to them. I'm, I'm moving towards this being a five year plan. I always say this year I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, but then I find there's time constraints, and again, there's only one of me. I can't clone myself. And so I have these goals, and while I would love for them to be in the next year, I would be happy if they are within the next five years. And one of those, a biggie, is getting the greenhouse built. Uh, I had wanted to do that this winter. I'm hope hopeful that it might yet still happen this year. If not, maybe next year. And then, of course, the second is goats we definitely want to add goats to the homestead maybe it'll be this year maybe it'll be in the next five years i'm not sure exactly question number three what's the most difficult lesson you have learned in homesteading well that kind of plays into the question two that i just answered and that is there is not enough hours in the day to get all the things done that i want to get done and i just have to understand that that is the case it's going to be. Um, I can have these goals, but there's only one of me. Question number four, what is your favorite chore on the homestead? Mm, well, that's actually not a very hard one. It's mowing the pasture. I absolutely love getting out there on the tractor and I, I put in my earbuds and I just cruise around in the sunshine and I will listen to podcasts or I will listen to worship music and it is just it's my quiet time it really is it, it's my me time out there every week mowing the pasture that is my favorite chore number five what's your favorite thing to grow well, besides the flowers, which I really grew a lot of them this year, and it just it made my heart so happy to just see the beauty out there with all of the zinnias and the cosmos. I also really love growing tomatoes, and this year we grew the Dr. Wikes or Dr. Witchies tomatoes for the first time, and I loved those tomatoes. They grew so well. And so even though I don't like to eat raw tomatoes, I do love tomato things like tomato sauce and all of that and of course using them in recipes. And so I would say that my favorite food thing to grow would be tomatoes, but my favorite thing to grow is the flowers just because it makes everything so beautiful. The zinnias, the cosmos, the sunflowers, the big beautiful sunflowers. Those are probably my favorite. Number six, what do you love most about the homestead community? What I love about the homestead community is really, that is something that really came to the forefront when I went to the Homesteaders of America conference. Being around people who have similar passions and um, you, you feel like you've met your tribe, you've met your people, because you have things in common that you don't necessarily have with all of the other people that you know. And being able to talk about seed germination and the struggles of dealing with predators and have people not look at you like you're crazy 
is a wonderful thing. So it's just that sense of camaraderie that you find with other homesteaders. And not only that, but the way everyone supports one another. You know, I went to another homestead back in uh, earlier, the end of summer, beginning of fall in Georgia. And to see all of these people who most of them had never met each other, came to the aid of another homesteader to help out and help them do the things they need to do when their health wasn't allowing them to do so. And I have seen things like that happen over and over and over again. So that sense of supporting one another and understanding one another is, I think, my favorite part of the homesteading community. Number seven, what is your favorite meal to make? Now understand this, you are talking to a food blogger. I cannot possibly pick my favorite meal to make. That's like that's not even a possibility. Now maybe my son could pipe in from the other room as to what his favorite meal is that he likes me to make, but I cannot possibly pick my favorite meal. Ham. Ham, he says. Ham and mustard pork chops. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Ham and the mustard pork chops that I make. Number eight, what is your favorite holiday? Well, keeping in with the food theme of the last question or two, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. It has been my favorite holiday for a very long time. I love just having the family around the table, enjoying a wonderful feast. I love cooking all of the different dishes and seeing people enjoy them. That is, that is my favorite holiday. Number nine, is this where we intend to stay? Absolutely. I have zero intention of ever moving ever again. We were an active duty army family for 25 years. We lived everywhere from Europe to Alaska. While I loved Alaska and I've talked many times about it and I joke all the time that I left a piece of my heart up there in the snow, this is where we live. We live here in Northern Alabama. This is where we have put down roots and I am not moving ever again. When we bought our property, we were very intentional about getting things that we would need long-term, like having our house all one story and having the ease of movement and all of that, not having a house that's too big. We wanted a small home. Our house is only about 1,500 square feet and that too was you know, on purpose because the smaller the home, the lower the utility bills. And thinking long term, that was one of the things that played a role in why we chose the property that we did. I do have a video where I talked all about why we chose this particular property, and I will link that down below if you are interested in that. And then number 10, the final question is, what homestead channels do you watch and learn from? Okay, so as a homesteading YouTuber and a blogger, and now a blogger times two, I don't actually watch very many channels. There are a couple of channels that I watch here and there, probably more than others. Most of the time, if I'm sitting down to watch something, it's because there's something that I want to learn. So I will look for a channel that has a focus on that particular niche. Um, for instance, if I want to learn about no-till gardening, I will check out Maura Gamble or uh, Charles Dowding, I think is his last name. 
Uh, Maura Gamble is in, can't remember if she's in Australia or New Zealand. Uh, Charles is in the UK and they have really great informational videos about no-till gardening and permaculture type of gardening and so those have been very very helpful to me um, of course there's roots and refuge I probably watch that channel more than any other channel uh, out there um, not only for her gardening and her vlogs but her wonderful devotionals um, there's there's several and I would never try to mention them all because I would miss out on people but there's there's lots of channels that I watch here and there uh, when I have the time to do so but the truth of the matter is that if I'm watching videos if I'm watching YouTube that takes away from the time that I need to actually create and so the more I create the less time I have to watch all right, so that is the 10 questions for the homesteaders tag. Be sure to check out Providence Farmstead who tagged me and thank you for tagging me in this tag. And so if you are interested in learning about homesteading, check out all of the other channels that are doing this tag and learn more about them. So thanks for stopping in here at A Good Life Farm. My name is Constance and I do three videos a week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. And if those are the things that you like, be sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my blogs. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you all next time. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty.